Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to jump into another 10 minute vignette episode. We're gonna cover two types of setups that you can do without carving a single piece of foam, all with ready-made stuff that you can buy at the craft store uh, or things that you got laying around the house. And we're gonna jump in and show you uh, two really cool ways to, to come up with a really cool, really classy vignette that you can display in your home. If you've got limited uh, uh, houses or a limited collection, this is perfect for you. So let's take a look and see what I've got to show you and uh, we'll jump right in. Okay, so hey, we're gonna jump through and go into the parts list that we're gonna use to help build these vignettes. There's gonna be two types today with two totally different flavors. But I was at the Joann's uh, earlier this season and we were walking through and we found these cool books. And I knew as soon as I saw them that we had to have them, I was gonna do something with them. So let me show them to you. First one I've got is this book here. Now these aren't books at all, these are storage boxes, but they're incredibly cool. And I saw these out with the Halloween stuff and I'm like, that is absolutely amazing. And it says Wicked on this one and uh, it's got the skull and the crossbones. And I, I, as soon as I saw this, I was thinking, okay, this is a perfect, uh, or would be perfect for a very scary type scene or a witch hollow piece. And so that book is one. The other book that kind of accompanies this, they're sold separately, is uh, it's got bats, it says stay for a bite. Uh, very, very cool. You can see down the spine of the book. And these are just the coolest things, right? Now, uh, these still have the price tags on them. This was $15 for the smaller one or $20 for the larger one. Now, obviously we did not pay <laughs> Uh, retail for these. We got these at a discounted price. Uh, they were on sale, I think 30% 30, 30 off, 40% off, something like that. So obviously try to find them when they're on sale. So we got two of those and we're going to, we're going to put a witch hollow pieces on these and decorate that out and see what it looks like. And then the second set of books that I was able to get are uh, these. They're a little more orange and black, uh, some yellow. It says, Welcome to Our Haunted House. The spine of the book uh, is, is kind of like this with the spider webs on it. It says, Tis the Season to be Spooky. And just a really cool storage container that looked like a book. So again, I saw these and when we had to have them. Uh, again, $20 on, uh, and then it was on sale on top of that. And then the accompanying book is perfect it says trick or treat i mean you can't go wrong halloween on the spine and then obviously you know the storage book there just really really nostalgic really cool on these particular books uh 15 on this one and then obviously you, you factor in the sell price so those are the the platforms that we're going to be using to decorate around today now we're not just going to use the platforms we want to also put into play some some signs or some extra, you know, accessories, some leaves, some, um, you know, cloth material, something like that. So let's go through that. Uh, I saw this at Michael's again, uh, $24.99 on this, but again, I think it was 30 or 40% off. This is a sign that I saw and this the uh, very nostalgic. It's got the trick or treat rules, you know, and, and how to go about trick or treating with some little, you know, kind of old school candy down there. Just very, very nostalgic. And I saw this as like, man, that would be perfect to go into a trick or treat lane vignette piece to be a sort of a backdrop. Even the back is shaped almost like a tombstone. So very, very cool. So that that is going to go into this vignette. And then we were at the dollar store and my wife was getting some uh, parts and pieces to make some fall wreaths with. Uh, and I came across this sign and I was like, wow, this is, uh, talk about witch hollow, right? Now there's a couple things we can do. This is a yard stake, but we could certainly cut this off and uh, put it down into some styrofoam. We don't have to cut styrofoam to do that. We could put it into a jar with some uh, you know, marbles or something in it to hold it up or what have you, we could take and remove the whole welcome part if we wanted, or we could simply, you know, cut around and remove the entire cat face and just use this nostalgic looking old school cat face 
into that vignette uh, somehow. I'm not gonna do any of that today. I just wanted to show it to you. Uh, we may throw it somehow into the vignette just to kind of give it a better look, but uh, I'm not gonna disassemble it uh, today. But there's that piece that we're gonna use as well. And then the last two pieces I wanna talk about that we're gonna use that involve, again, no foam cutting is some material uh, fabric that you can get. And we got this at, uh, at Joann's, but this piece is, is sort of purple and uh, kind of an eerie color with some bats and some scary trees and the moon. Uh, you, you may have seen this in a couple of my videos kind of laying underneath some displays for doing reviews and things like that on. Uh, but this would be perfect to lay out as a covering for the Witch Hollow is what we're going to look at doing that today. And then you certainly probably have seen this one. It's been in many of the videos, but this is more of an orange uh, and yellow with some scary trees. This would be perfect for the trick or treat lane uh, vignette that we're gonna do. You don't have to have any of this, uh, but I think it will help to kind of sell the scene and make it look a little more classy and a little more presentable. And then we'll throw some trees into the mix, some, uh, um, fall leaves and, and things like that. And uh, we'll see how these look. So now let's jump in and take a look at the two uh, pieces that we're going to look at presenting onto these uh, bases. Now keep in mind, you could present any house uh, that you want on these. So it doesn't make a difference on what I show you the houses we're gonna use. Uh, you may have totally different houses or may have a better idea to use something different on here. I, I simply found these because they were easiest to get to in, uh, in my uh, storage area. And so that's what we're going to look at today. So for the Witch Hollow, we're going to look at two pieces. I've got a house and a coordinating accessory piece. And the house we're going to look at is, uh, this is the uh, Esmeralda Shoe Shop. Uh, which is one of my favorite uh, Witch Hollow pieces. So we're gonna look at Esmeralda Shoe Shop uh, on top of that. And then if you look at the back, they always show you the coordinating piece that is supposed to accompany these if you choose to buy it. Well, if you take my advice, you know that I always suggest, always recommend that you buy them because if you don't, and then down the road later, after they've already sold out, you decide, hey, it was probably a good idea. I should get one, you'll pay sometimes triple, you know, double, triple, whatever for the piece. So we'll be looking at the accessory that goes with this, and that is uh, green with envy uh, for the, the coordinating accessory that goes with that. And then for the um, trick-or-treat area, we're just gonna use, because I just put this away yesterday, this is uh, Hazel's Haunted House. So we're gonna be looking at this piece on that uh, particular platform. And then uh, the coordinating piece, it's a silver series, the coordinating piece, which is actually Hazel walking her imaginary or her ghost dog, comes with the set, so that's a bonus. But then I figure we'll just take the trick or treat kids and use those to kind of smatter around maybe on the smaller book and see how that looks along with some fall leaves and some trees and, and things like that. So I think they're gonna look really good. I haven't set these up ahead of time to see how they look. So we're gonna kind of do it real time, but I think they're gonna look just fine. So let me reposition the camera, uh, get some of this stuff out of the boxes and we'll start putting it together. Okay, I've got everything sort of set into place here. And so I've taken the, the cloth or the fabric. Now you could cut this or scallop the edges with some different types of scissors or, or fold it. Uh, I'm trying to make it more into a, not just a square. Uh, obviously it's not completely a circle, but uh, you kind of get the, the, the point here. And we'll take our two books and probably just start placing those Something about like that. I want to make sure you guys can see everything here. So something about like that. And then we'll take our pieces. Uh, the accessory piece would go down here. Uh, and our main house would uh, go up here. Something like that. Let me make sure you can still see everything here. Uh, let me... Let me readjust here. Okay, so that's about about right. Okay, so something like that, and then we would plug this in. So that would come on. You can see how that works. 
uh, and then we would just start putting some trees in various spots to sort of complete that look. Something along like that. We can take some of these leaves and kind of spread some leaves out up here just to kind of give it the, the fall look. No real rhyme or reason. And then the same thing over here, just sprinkle a few leaves out to make it look the part. Something like that, perhaps. And then we take our bigger leaves and we start putting those out in front. These are, again, really hard to, to rip apart, but you sort of get the idea of how those are starting to look. You can actually put some up on top as well. And trying to really complete and sell that look there. And you can bring these uh, out as, as far as you want. So that's how that would look. That was way less than 10 minutes to put that together. Uh, now, if we had the sign and we wanted to display the sign, again, it's, it's on this thing, but look how well that would coordinate. Now, obviously it would need to, to be in there some way. You can kind of see what that would look like sort of at the, on the, you know, in the background, obviously a little bit closer. It's just, I can't do it with this this stick on it, but it would be closer up to the, to the front of that, uh, kind of in this area here, standing straight up where you could see that. And I think that would look really, really good. Uh, also, we have this little uh, homemade bat that we were able to find at one of the uh, uh, crafting, um, kind of like a street fair up in uh, Prescott a few years back. His name is Fang, uh, but you could, I mean, just little accessories like this, just to kind of sit in there or just to kind of help sell the rest of the vignette. But if you take a look at that, uh, looks pretty good. And that's one house and one accessory. Can you imagine if you slid this back just a little bit, put the accessory piece up here and put another small witch uh, hollow house here with another small accessory, if you've got more than one piece, then it just makes the vignette look that much stronger and that much better. But if you're like if you're just starting out collecting and you've only got the uh, the the main piece and the accessory, this looks just fine as a vignette. I think it looks incredibly well. So with that, let's take uh, take you down on the tripod, give you a closer look at what it looks like, and then we'll start on the next one. Okay, a little better angle here, as you can see. This looks really good, and uh, the bat looks great there. Uh, so you come in and kind of zoom in. You've got the bat theme down there. You've got some trees. You've got the accessory piece. And look how good that looks sitting up there. That black with all the orange just really, really makes it pop. And then you come up to the Wicked uh, on the book there, the box. Uh, and then into this little uh, witch hollow piece, Esmeralda's shoe shop is just beautiful sitting up there, especially with the black, the green, the, all the, the fall leaves. It looks really, really, really good. And so that is a quick, less, much less than 10 minutes to set that up once you've got everything out. No foam carving at all, but it looks really, really good and really classy. And I think anybody would be impressed if they came in and saw this in your home. So there's a closer look at that one. Okay, so I, I don't know about you, but I think that Witch Hollow uh, scene looked really, really incredibly cool on those books. I think the dark color of the books matched with the, the orange and all of the colors there just really made it stand out and pop. It was really cool, really classy looking in my opinion. So let's jump in now to the uh, trick-or-treat lane or in this case hazel's haunted house and see how that looks on these boxes uh, and we'll film that and, and let you see what you think 
Okay, so we got everything laid out like we uh, did on the last one. We'll basically set this one up the same way. Start with a couple of books kind of angled towards the front. We'll take uh, Hazel's Haunted House. It's already plugged in. And uh, make sure that it sets level up there, which looks pretty good. Uh, and then we'll take Hazel, the accessory piece, and put her here. All right, and then we'll take our trick-or-treat kids. These are my favorite Department 56 Village accessory. These are just amazing in every aspect of the word. And we'll just kind of put those something along like that in front. We'll throw a big tree up here. Throw a pretty decent side. Actually, let's put the big tree back here. It'll probably look a little bit better. Smaller tree here. And then a couple of trees behind the kids, just like we did on the last one. Uh, we'll take some of these leaves here and sprinkle around. A little more difficult to see with the, uh, the orange of the box and the orange of the uh, tablecloth underneath. And you don't have to use a tablecloth like that or a piece of material. You can use anything that you would like. And then I've got the easel here that will support this stand or the easel that will support the photo or the picture, I should say. And kind of put that in the back and, and you'll get to see that a little bit better once we uh, bring the camera up a little bit. But you kind of see how that's starting to look there. And then again, same thing with the leaves over here. Just kind of get some leaves thrown around and see if... Uh, See what that looks like uh, on the box and in front. It's hard to pick this up because of the colors of these leaves. They blend right in with this, uh, this claw. So maybe not the best use of this, but it still looks pretty good. And again, that was, you know, once you get everything out and everything out of the box, you're looking at certainly just a couple of minutes to get it all set up and to look like that. And so like before, let's uh, take you off the tripod and take a closer look and see what this looks like. All right, you can see there is a lot of orange in this display. And I think maybe the, the cloth may be a little too much for this, but look how cool Hazel's Haunted House looks sitting up on top of that box with the tree and the, the accessory piece. And then you've got the trick or treat rules. And then you come down to this side here and you've got all your kids out there on the trick or treat, uh, kind of the road or the lane, uh, you know, excited for their find and their candy. And so just a really cool nostalgic looking setup that takes just a matter of minutes to do, yet still looks very, very cool and very classy. And uh, for sure, I would make this more of a circle the fabric underneath more of a circle or, or maybe even a, a different color fabric altogether. Maybe black would, uh, or a darker color would look better. I just picked this out because I thought it might look all right. But uh, that's how you do that. That's pretty simple and looks pretty cool. Okay, well you see how simple and easy that is to set up a quick yet cool and classy vignette. We used Hazel's Haunted House on uh, the, the Silver Series gift set that comes with Hazel, the actual figure. Put that on the big box and then the Trick or Treat Kids on the little box. If you don't have the Trick or Treat Kids or you only have one piece, uh, you could use one book or one box and, and set that up like that. You don't have to put the sign in the back. It'll still look really, really cool. Very easy to set up and it doesn't, uh, doesn't you don't have to do any foam carving, hot gluing, uh, putting moss down or any of that other stuff. Just very, very quick and very simple, yet very tasteful. And so hopefully that helps to get you motivated and encouraged to uh, start maybe simple. And as your village and your accessories start to, to grow and you want to advance out and put them on something bigger, like maybe a creepy circus or something back there, then we'll move into all of that and show you exactly how to carve the foam, exactly how to build the fences and all the other stuff that comes with that. Hey, speaking of building, I need your help. If you, uh, I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do next. And so I've put a small poll uh, on my YouTube channel under the community tab. So if you go to the YouTube channel, to, to my page, 
and look up at the top you'll see the videos and all the other stuff up there uh, for the links to all that one tab should say community if you click on the community tab you should see a poll i'm asking you guys on what i need to do next and the two options are uh, the spooky farm or the scary farm however we're going to do that or witch hollow and so i've got enough pieces to to do uh, a witch hollow scene as well i'll eventually do them both but which one would you rather see me do next go on to that uh, community site there on the youtube channel and vote i'm going to leave that open for another three or four or five days and then we'll tally up the votes and whoever wins that's what i'm going to do next so get your vote in if you want to see something uh specific put your vote in and, and we'll go down that road and see how that turns out so hey with that if you've liked this video make sure you click the like button if you have questions or comments please make sure that you put those uh in the uh, in the comments and i'll get back to those and then like always if you haven't subscribed to the channel please make sure that you do so that way you get notified especially if you click the little bell icon you get notified anytime a new video comes out that way you can watch it at your leisure so with that until next time take care of yourselves and we'll talk again real soon